Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. It hasn't been long since my last video. In fact, I'm filming this video back to back with the Red Dead Redemption 2 video. Uh, so if I look a bit terrible, that's because it's, I think, two in the morning now. I'm not really sure. One of my eyes is very bloodshot, I know, but we have work to do. I've got to finish this up because as I said, I'm flying out shortly to New Zealand to go and say goodbye to Kev. Um, and I'll talk more about that. I've actually got something for the set, which I want to show you guys at the end of this video. Anyway, I'll jump into this one. We'll get it done. I'll get it edited and then I'll get some sleep. So today we have a few official announcements for you from AMD. Uh, naturally, we have details regarding the highly anticipated 16 core Ryzen 9 3950X. We have some information about the upcoming third gen Threadripper series and then a new $50 CPU. So that's interesting. But anyway, before we get into all of that, Today's video is sponsored by PC Case Gear, Australia's premier online PC store. Whenever I'm in the need for a product, they're the first place I turn to, and I've been a customer of theirs for years now, so I really can attest to the quality of their service. I value their broad product range, competitive pricing, customer support, and easy to navigate website. With two decades of experience, I know I can trust PC Case Gear to look after you guys as well as they look after me. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, actually, before I continue, I'll just quickly note that yes, there is a lot of wind noise at the moment. It's blowing an absolute gale outside. Nothing I can do about it. I can't postpone this video and film it tomorrow. It's got to go out soon. So yeah, that, we'll just have to... Apologies to you guys wearing headphones. The wind noise does suck a bit. Anyway, let's get on with it. So at the top of the food chain, we have the third gen Threadripper series. We knew the 24 core and 32 core models were coming, but that's about all we knew prior to this announcement. Of course, as expected, the rumor mill has been working overtime on this one. Midway through last month, we heard a reports that the 64 core flagship 3990X, that is a 64 core 128 thread part, we heard that that wouldn't be arriving until January next year. And given the info we have today, that seems entirely possible. What I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt is that the 3960X is a 24 core 48 thread part that clocks between 3.8 and 4.5 gigahertz depending on the workload. Oh, and it has an absolutely mammoth 140 megabyte cache. That all sounds amazing and it's almost certainly going to be, but, and that is a rather large but, this entry level third gen Threadripper part will set you back an eye-watering $1400 US. That's probably going to shock quite a few of you given that the second gen 24 core 2970WX can be currently had for $915 US. But remember the MSRP on that part is actually $1300 US so the third gen version actually only costs $100 more. It's probably also worth noting that while Intel's upcoming Core i9-10980XE will cost $1,000 US. Man, I can't wait to start reviewing those parts and have to say 10980XE many more times in one video. Anyway, that part only offers 18 cores, and while we don't yet know how those two parts stack up, again, we will know shortly when we review them, I'm gonna go all in on the 3960X coming out on top in core heavy workloads. Actually, to that effect, AMD has prepared a first party benchmark slide showing the 3960X taking on the 9980XE. And in terms of performance, we are expecting the upcoming Cascade Lake X parts to be very similar to Skylake X as we're really looking at just a refresh with a price correction. So the 9980XE should be representative of what we see with the 10980XE. According to AMD, that means it'll be up to 31% faster for compiler work, 22% faster in Adobe Premiere Pro CC, 24% faster for rendering with V-Ray, and a massive 54% faster in Cinebench R20. So it's possible the 40% price premium could be worth it. Hard to say for sure right now though. Speaking of price premiums, you might want to sit down for this one. The 3970X, the 32-core 64-thread model, that one will set you back a cool $2,000 US. Yep, that one certainly has some bite to it, priced $200 above the 2990WX. And it's now by far the most expensive high-end desktop CPU on the market, or at least it will be, presumably later this month. The 3970X clocks between 3.7 and 4.5 gigahertz and features a whopping 144 megabytes of cache. 
AMD claims it's up to 90% faster than the 9980X in Cinebench R20, 49% faster in V-Ray, 47% faster in Premiere Pro, and 36 to 43% faster for compilers. AMD's also detailed the new TRX40 platform featuring a mind-blowing 72 available PCIe 4.0 lanes. There are 88 PCIe lanes in total, but 16 of them will be required to actually use the system as a graphics card is necessary. Directly from the CPU, there are 48 PCIe 4.0 lanes, which AMD marks as general purpose, and that means they can really be used for anything and will typically be accessible via PCIe expansion slots. There's an additional eight lanes which are split into two four lane groups and each can be used to offer either a times four expansion slot, a times four NVMe M.2 slot or four SATA ports. The CPU supports four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and quad channel DDR4 3200 memory. Then on the CPU, we also have support for four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and a quad channel DDR4 3200 memory controller. A further eight PCIe 4.0 lanes connect to the TRX40 chipset, providing four times more CPU to chipset bandwidth when compared to the second gen Threadripper parts. The chipset supports a further eight USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, four legacy USB 2 ports, four SATA 6 gigabits per second ports, and a further eight PCIe 4.0 general purpose lanes. And yet on top of that, there's also another eight PCIe 4.0 lanes, which are reserved and again, slip into two four lane groups. They can either be configured as a single times four slot, a pair of two times slots or four one time slots, or they can also be used to support four SATA six gigabits per second drives. The sheer number of expansion possibilities really is mind blowing. Uh, there's no doubt going to be some truly insane TRX40 motherboards. I'm very excited to check those out. I've seen a preview of a couple of boards and yeah there's going to be some insane boards the only downer here other than the small price hike for the cpus themselves is the fact that the trx40 and then the existing tr4 motherboards uh, will be in no way compatible that's something we've heard again via rumors which appears to be correct so uh, you won't be able to use a third gen Threadripper CPU on an existing X399 motherboard and then upcoming TRX40 boards won't support first or second gen parts. Of course, AMD didn't make any TR4 compatibility promises like what they did with the AM4 socket so they can get away with dropping support here without too much fuss. As much as we don't like them dropping support, I think for this one it probably does make sense and cross compatibility with TR4 would have meant board makers uh, would face all the same issues they have with the AM4 boards, getting them to work, BIOS rollouts and all that kind of stuff. It's a whole lot of work for the motherboard makers and I don't think they're enjoying uh, the current situation with the AM4 socket. And there still seems to be you know, an ongoing process with 300 and 400 series AM4 motherboards to get them up to speed. There's still a lot of issues to work out. So I think on a high-end desktop platform, it's probably best to avoid all that. And then there's also the fact that the older boards wouldn't be able to take full advantage of all the extra PCI lanes supported by the third gen Threadripper CPUs. The X399 chipset also lacks PCIe 4.0 support. So it kind of makes sense that those spending well over $1,000 US on a CPU would want a motherboard that can take full advantage and therefore shelling out for a new premium board really shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay, let's shift gears from the up to $2,000 Threadripper processors to a $50 processor. It's not often you'll find an Athlon CPU on the same press deck as flagship Threadripper parts, but that's exactly what we found here. Getting announced for the first time is the Athlon 3000G, a fully unlocked $50 AM4 dual core processor with SMT for four threads. Now you might be thinking, we've already got that. It's called the 200GE. And yeah, you'd be pretty well right with that one. That said, the 200G is technically a locked part despite MSI unlocking it on some of their boards, though I'm honestly not sure if that's still a thing. Anyway, the 3000G will be unlocked on all AM4 motherboards that support overclocking, so B350 or better. Out of the box, it matches the same 3.5 GHz clock speed as the 240G, which costs $75 US, and the Vega 3 graphics engine remains the same, but it has been overclocked by 100 megahertz, so a small performance bump to be expected there. Overall, it's not the most exciting CPU ever, as it's still a Zen 2 based part and doesn't pack a Navi GPU, but it does offer a little extra value at the $50 price point, and it will also likely mean a price drop for the 200GE until stock runs out. Also, for those wondering, this part will drop on the 19th, and we plan to have a review up on the channel at that date, so stay tuned for that. 
Based on the press deck, it looks like AMD is expecting it to slay the Pentium G5400, offering massive performance gains when comparing iGPU performance and anywhere from 4 to 25% more CPU performance depending on the workload. They also showed overclocked performance at 3.9 GHz, so it appears to be a clock speed they believe most parts will achieve. And this sees the new Athlon CPU leave the Pentium in its dust. Moving on, we finally have the Ryzen 9 3950X, and the main takeaway from here being that it has a release date now. It's slated for the 25th of November, and I'm 99.9% .9 certain that this date is final and won't get delayed again. For those of you who aren't yet up to speed, the 3950X supports the mainstream AM4 socket. It offers 16 cores, 32 threads that are clocked between 3.5 and 4.7 GHz and pack a big 72 megabyte cache. And for what it's worth, AMD is also rating it at 105 watts for the TDP. The very same TDP awarded to the 12 core 3900X, though that part does have a higher base clock. Pricing still remains at $700, so that means it costs $47 per core, whereas the 3900X and 3700X both cost around $41 per core. There's also the pointless 3800X, which is much more expensive per core at $50, but as we found a few months ago, you're best off avoiding that part. So it's quite clear you are paying a price premium for those 16 cores, but that was always going to be the case. Pretty well expected when buying the best quality silicon on the AM4 platform. AMD says the 3950X will come up against a CPU from the Intel high-end desktop platform, and that CPU is the Core i9-9920X, which was their 12-core $1200 part. But really that means that we'll be doing battle with the $700 Core i9-10920X, the refreshed 12-core Cascade Lake X version. So that will be a bit of an interesting battle indeed. Still, when compared to the 9920X, the 3950X looks mighty impressive in AMD slides, which I recommend taking with a grain of salt, though they are generally pretty accurate from AMD, but they are also very selective with which tests they show. So again, keep that in mind. As always, it's just best to wait for the proper reviews. But still, it looks like when it comes to gaming performance, the 3950X easily has the 9920X beat, while it's vastly superior for rendering and encoding work. AMD is also expected to have a significant advantage when it comes to efficiency, offering over two times the performance per watt when compared to the 9900K and 9920X. Despite that, AMD does recommend a 280mm AIO or better for those buying a 3950X, and despite sharing the same TDP rating as the 3900X, it doesn't actually come with the Wraith Prism RGB box cooler, so that is a bit of a downer in terms of value, though probably not a big deal when spending $750 US on a CPU. Chances are you'll want to upgrade the box cooler anyway. Speaking of the $750 price tag, you might be thinking, Sure, it sounds like a nice CPU, but the price is simply too high for me right now, and if I'm honest, I don't require 16 cores. Again, at least right now. And both of those are valid thoughts, and I suspect many of you watching this video are thinking something along those lines. But the 3950X is actually amazingly good news for even budget builders, and that's because it adds a lot of value to the AM4 platform. Had you invested in a cheap Intel Z390 motherboard with something like a $180 Core i5-8400, for example, your upgrade prospects right now don't look that great. Most likely, in a few years, you'll have the option of an overpriced 8-core CPU or face the unfortunate reality of having to ditch your motherboard and start over. Meanwhile, those who bought a decent B350 or X370 motherboard up to two years ago now will have, in the not-too-distant future, the option of buying a 12 or 16 core Ryzen CPU secondhand. As an example to support this, the Ryzen 7 2700X was released a little over a year ago now for $330 US. Today you can snap them up secondhand for as little as $150 on eBay. In another year, there's no way you'll be paying over $100. And to support that claim, the two-year-old Ryzen 7 1700X, which originally sold for $400 US, can now be quite easily had for $100 US, sometimes even less. So I'd say in two to three years time, you'll be looking at most paying half price for a 3950X. It's been really interesting to see just how much life the AM4 platform has in it. If you'd told me back in early 2017 that this is where Ryzen would end up a little under three years later, uh, if I'm honest, I probably would have said you're dreaming. That said, to be fair, eight cores on the mainstream platform for as little as $330 US back then was pretty incredible. So. Who knows, maybe I might have said, well, anything's possible at this point.
Anyway, it's good to finally have an official release date for the Ryzen 9 3950X. I just hope we're not going to run into any availability issues. If I had to guess, I'd say we're probably going to, but of course we'll just have to wait and see. Pricing of the third gen Threadripper parts is probably higher than most of you are expecting, or at least hoping for, but I feel those MSRPs could actually be a little bit misleading. I mean, obviously that's the MSRP and that's the price they will be introduced at, but as I said, the 2970WX, which is meant to be a $1,300 US part, just four months after release, it was available for $100 off. Not a massive discount, but it is a discount and we don't see that with Intel processors. And then it was $300 off five months later, so a month after the four month period, and then just shy of a year, it was down around $900. So bear that in mind, there's some pretty big discounts there and it's possible we may see that again. That said, despite heavy, seriously heavy price cuts from Intel, again, something we don't often see, this is, yeah, uncharted territory for Intel really. It's been a long, long time since they've had to slash prices like this. But anyway, Despite Intel doing all that, AMD's done the opposite and they've jacked their prices up by $100 to $200 US. So we really could be looking at a changing of the guard here. Of course, Intel's high-end desktop CPUs were grossly overpriced to begin with and this allowed AMD to claim victory with their much cheaper first and second gen Threadripper parts. So yeah, this is more of a correction on Intel's end. Still, I'm keen to hear what you guys think about the pricing info. So please feel free to drop your thoughts below and I'll be sure to read them. And that's gonna do it for this one. Just lastly, as I said, I will be preparing to fly out to New Zealand to say goodbye to Kev and attend his funeral. And I've got a new member for the Harbour Unbox team or, or just something to go in the background there. And that is our very own Teddy. So this isn't the original Teddy that Kev had. It's a smaller version that'll fit on our set nicely. If anyone's wondering what happened to Teddy, his brother took him, so. Yeah, Teddy's with Kev's brother now. I think that's probably the best place for him to be. But yeah, we have another Teddy, which is the same sort of Teddy as, as Teddy. And it's something we can remember Kev by. So I think that's really cool. I'm gonna stick that in the background there. So he'll be in the background of all our videos. And that's something to remember Kev by because he, he did love Teddy. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And just thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time. Bye. There he is, he looks pretty happy up there. I think that's a good spot for him.